So today's video we're going to look at doing portraits in a confined space. Sometimes you don't have a lot of room to maneuver and you still need to get a good portrait. So this is one option. We're going to need some equipment to do this. One is a studio strobe. A small low-powered monolight should suffice. We'll also need some type of backdrop. In this case we're going to use a 53 inch wide roll of seamless paper, super white color and we're also going to use a background stand. If you don't have a background stand, you could just take the paper, cut off enough of it, and tape it to the wall with painter's tape. So since you're working in confined space, you'll probably want to have the model fairly close to the backdrop. One of the things you have to watch out for when the model is so close to the background is shadows. You're going to have a shadow when the model is really close to the background. What you want to avoid is a shadow being cast significantly to the left or right of the model, and you can keep that from happening if you have the light that's on the same line between you and the model. So imagine there's a line between you and the model. You want the light on that same line so it's coming directly down onto the model and it's not either to her left or to her right. If it is, you're going to have a shadow being cast in the opposite direction. Even with everything lined up, you're still going to have a shadow on that backdrop that's farther down the backdrop. There's hardly any way to get around this. Really the only way is for the model to step away from the backdrop if you have enough room to do that. And if you do, and you're framing tight enough, then you won't have that shadow in the frame. It'll still be there. It's just so far down the backdrop that it's not in the picture anymore. But since the whole purpose of this is you're shooting in a confined space, you're probably going to have a little bit of shadow and it, it may not be that objectionable. You just need to keep everything kind of lined up and watch where the model is moving left to right to make sure everything's all lined up so you don't have that shadow one way or the other. Also in today's example I'm using sort of two types of light. One is a hard light, one is a soft light. The hard light is what you see first and this is coming from nothing more than a standard reflector on the strobe. So there's no other modifier on the light, it's straight light coming out of the strobe. A hard light casts very defined shadows. It's a dramatic light that has a high contrast between the bright areas of the image and the shadows. Hard light can be pretty difficult to work with. You certainly have to watch where the shadows are. And also, for certain types of people, it's not the best lighting choice. On the flip side, there's soft light. And soft light is light that has been diffused somehow. In the case of what you're seeing here in the video, I have a medium softbox on the strobe. It's a softbox that's half as wide as what's typical for a medium, so it doesn't take up as much room and I can move it around fairly easily in a confined space. You could also get the same effect with a small softbox or a beauty dish with a, a diffusion sock on top of it. Soft light has nice gradual shadows, so there's no hard edges to any of the shadows. The light seems to kind of wrap around the subject. It's very flattering. It's very easy to work with. And if I had to recommend a certain type of light to use whenever photographing people, soft light is the best choice, I think, because it suits a lot of people and it's pretty easy to work with. You still, however, have to watch where the shadows are. In this case, I'm using just one light. So if Mary's moving one direction or another, or moving her head up and down, or have to watch where her hair is falling on her face, you can still get significant shadows but it's a lot easier to work with. So that's a really quick overview of working in a confined space. The amount of depth here that I, we probably had from where I was standing to where the backdrop was, was maybe five feet, maybe even a little bit less. So if you have a tight space, you can get some pretty good photos. You won't be able to do full length, obviously. The best you can probably do is maybe waist up or a little bit higher than that. It's certainly good for head and shoulders work. Even though we didn't have a lot of space to work with here, we still got good photos. You just have to watch the type of light you're using and have to watch where those shadows fall.